Hi, in this video, let's look at how we can implement a retrieval augmented generation using OpenAI's API. So retrieval augmented generation or RAG, it's a very important concept. Um, imagine you have an LLM that is already trained. You know that most of these LLMs which with uh, 100 billion parameters or more, they take a lot of, it takes a lot of money, expense running on tens of thousands of GPU for many hours or weeks or months depending on the parameter size it takes a lot of resources to train these llms so you don't want to retrain it if you have some new data but still you might want to have some queries into this llm and get responses so if you are running a company and if you have a certain company standard operating procedure documents and you want to tra train an LLM on top of this uh, this SOP uh, standard operating procedures and you want to create a chatbot uh, which can query from using this LLM but specifically within the knowledge of that that particular SOP so the technique by which you can do this is called RAG retrieval augmented generation and here you are not retraining the entire LLM but you are augmenting the information from these extra documents into your query such that the LLM can provide you an appropriate response. So let's see how we can implement a simple RAG model and how we can train, uh, sorry, how we can um, ask queries to it based on a document that we provide and how to get responses and uh, how to fine tune this, etc. So <clears throat> Here is the code that I'll be demonstrating to you. Um, so we'll be using Llama index and for the GPT, we'll be using OpenAI's API key. So let's go through this step by step. So in the first step, we are importing OS. Uh, let's run the cell. Should be done pretty fast. <coughs> And once this is done, we should, uh, if you have not done pip install llama index, you can do this. So what I'll do is I'll um, share the link to this notebook. Uh, maybe I'll upload this on GitHub and I'll share the link to the GitHub repository with this code. And let's install llama index. And after this is done, we have to run a code that looks like something like this so i have commented this here so you should uncomment this and put your open ai api key over here i have put the key here but um, i have masked the code to protect the key so i will also run this code after the after llama index is installed so llama index uh, has been installed now uh, i can clear this output okay so let me run the open ai api okay so that much is done now what we will do is we want to um, set up data uh, and this data is the extra data from a document or something like that which we input to the LLM. So we'll be loading data in this example from a folder called data here. So first let me create a folder right click new folder called data. So we'll sh we should be putting all the new data here and what can be the data? Maybe I can create a data using something like this. Who won the IPL match yesterday? So let's see what is the response here. And what I could do is I could go to this website and there are a bunch of match results here, including some commentary from the previous day's matches. Uh, what I can do is I can save this as a PDF. So let me, I think I can print this as a PDF. <clears throat> All right. So let me save. Okay, so this has been saved as a PDF. Now I'll close this. So we have now the data and let's upload it over here. So click here, click upload and we can, uh, <laughs> this one. 
okay so it's being uploaded you can see the progress over here it should be pretty fast because the file is a small file so the file is now uploaded to this data so the directory that we are reading is data we can also check if we can upload multiple um, PDF files here but currently let me do this with just one PDF file so now what I do is I will read this uh, let me first comment this part we are reading the directory and this documents is the variable where we are storing the contents from the from this PDF so what I'll do is I'll also open the the PDF file um, I guess uh, what I can do is I can up, I can open the the website which I just closed so this is how the PDF file will look like right so whatever information is here should be there in the PDF and now if we print this documents we should be able to see how it looks like so you can see the the structure of the document it has all the information that is that was there in this web page and bunch of and whenever there is a new line you can see that that there are a lot of new lines slash and characters there are these hyperlinks so overall what happened is um, we read the directory called data and we read this pdf file and now we have stored it in this format um, in the documents variable all right now what we do is we let me just comment this we create a vector store index so uh, essentially what we have to do is in llms we are representing text using uh, vector embedding so basically what it means is if you have two English words that have similar meaning so for example the word dog and the word puppy they may be starting with you know alphabetically they may be if, if these words are in a dictionary they are far apart but the actual meaning of dog and puppy in a in a language should stay close to each other right so um, vector embedding is something where you convert these English words into an n-dimensional space vector were vectors that are pointing into the similar direction uh, of similar magnitude they all have similar meanings so um, let's say love affection um, attraction bunch of these words that correspond to kind of similar meaning may have vectors that look similar so what we do here is first we create a vector index and uh, let me run this piece of code here and after running maybe I can try I don't know if we can output this index okay so vector index uh, vector store index has been created now in the next step what we do is the index is converted into a query engine so in query engine we can uh, process queries that we are asking in the English language so we'll be asking the uh, queries to the LLM and um, the vector index which was created based on the data from this document uh, is now converted into a query engine and then what we do is we have a retriever query engine and post processor so first in the retriever we'll be retrieving top n items uh, top k items in terms of similarity so when we are retrieving some information based on the query we will be retrieving top four here then in post processor what we are doing here is we are defining a similarity cutoff so similarity cutoff is defined as 0.5 so what that means is um, if only two items that are retrieved have has similarity cutoff greater than 0.5 what it means is even though we are trying to fetch four top four similar items we'll be only having two so so essentially we are looking at uh, you know outputs that are fetched uh, uh, based on the query and outputs with similarity cut of greater than 0.5 and the top four from that that's what we are looking at and here we are defining the uh, query engine based on retriever query engine let me run this part of the code okay now what we have to do is so we we use this query engine to create our query right so that's the whole reason why we created this and here we are defining the parameter so we define the the retriever so retriever has uh, index as this 
right? Uh, the index was the vector vector index of the document. So we are passing index as that and similarity top four similar uh, items. Okay, so the um, those two parameters are passed and then the similarity cutoff is passed through the post processor over here. So retriever passes the index and similarity, the, the top how many ever we want to fetch and then the post processor is passing the similarity cutoff. And here let's input the query. So maybe I can ask uh, who, which team won the most matches uh, so far. So this is my query. So let's run this. <clears throat> and now what we can do is we can uh, get the response. So print the response um, and also print the top four responses before cleaning up the response. So, so in the final response, we see if CSK has won most matches so far. I don't know if this is true. I have to check that. Maybe I, I'll open the PDF here. Let me... Uh, okay, so I'm opening it here on Chrome. Let's see who has won the most matches. Uh, I, I doubt this website has been up, updated with the most recent game updates, but um, I'm not sure CSK has won the most number of matches. I thought uh, KKR or Rajasthan Royals won the most number of matches. Uh, perhaps this is a, this is a mistake. Hmm. But doesn't matter. Nevertheless, uh, I mean, of course, mistake. Maybe we can ask, we can ask something else, uh, something specific. So let's look at the document. What other details are there? Okay, so this was yesterday's match. So maybe we can ask in yesterday's match, how many runs did Gujarat Titans score? I don't know if uh, you know our LLM has the uh, ability to read score cricket scorecards and all. Uh, maybe it has uh, since it's all it's trained on huge data set. Let's see what the response is. Uh, GT scored two hundred and fourteen for the loss of four wickets. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, two hundred and fourteen for four wickets. So this is how we can. Um, train and uh, LLM. Now, one more thing I want to do is like per perhaps add one more document here and uh, let me see how how we can um, uh, get data from multiple documents within this folder. So this time maybe I can search something like um, perhaps I can download, I can, I can upload some textbook or something like that. So I'll upload a Harry Potter uh, txt file with harry potter textbook i mean harry potter book uh, i think it's somewhere here yeah harry.txt so that is being uploaded it's a relatively small file yeah okay fine now what we should do is we should run this part of the code let me clear the output uh, we should run this part of the code once again since our data is now different and let's see how the documents look like uh, now with the new data perhaps harry potter is also added to the documents let's see um, so all of this is still about the ipl um, but yeah see dumbledore so now harry potter is also there so basically Using this approach, you can upload multiple documents. Let me clear this. Uh, and let's run this. Converting uh, into vector embeddings, then defining the query engine for the embeddings. Okay, so this part is taking some time to run. Um, I guess generating embeddings is taking time this time more time than before 
and and you can also see that my internet has slowed down a little bit um, you can see that my my screen recording is freezing a little bit but hopefully after this running is finished my screen recording will be better so you can see that i am also freezing a little bit here hmm i'll pause and come back once this is finished okay the run has been finished now let's define the query engine done uh, importing i need not run it again so now we define um, the retriever and post processor that's also done so here now the query could be uh, maybe summarize the harry potter story mm. Let's see what kind of response I can get. Okay, so here are the final responses. So one thing I forgot to show you before was the similarity score. So here uh, we are printing top four responses. We can also print like uh, top 10 responses. So maybe let's try that and let's see how the similarity score decreases. So query engine and now it should print top 10 responses and all of them should have similarity cutoff score above 0.5 so you can see the similarity score of the top uh, response it has 0.86 similarity score uh, 0.86 again so by the time we are at the 10th one it's 0.84 and the final response is shown up here after cleaning up the story follows harry potter young wizard this is this so uh, overall you can see that whatever document we have uploaded we are able to retrieve um, information based on this document using the LLM so we are able to append the document into the query using LLM uh, using, using OLAMA sorry uh, using LAMA index and uh, we are able to uh, retrieve information this very effectively so RH is a very powerful technique uh, many companies are trying to implement this and uh, there is another way to do the same thing offline so currently we are exposing the information in both of these documents to open ai right because we are using their api key but we can also run um, small versions of um, llms offline with 7 billion parameters etc and you can get uh, you can you can do raz on top of that or you could even train those uh, i think training might take more time but doing raz locally is also possible so we'll be doing another video on that and to learn more about rig we'll be creating a full-blown video in our generative ai uh, lecture series so please feel free to follow it uh, we'll be posting the link uh, uh, in the description and also feel free to subscribe to our channel